pleasure and an honor to welcome live to our radio show here, Joey DeMaio of Manowar. Joey. Hi, Eddie. How are you, man? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good until I lost the last 30 seconds of that great Sabbath song a second ago. Oh, well, you can't go wrong with Sabbath. <laughs> you know that is better as well as anybody, especially that era. You know, Joey, I was just looking. I didn't realize this. Uh, your office sent me a... Uh, a tribute album that you guys put out uh, to Ronnie not too long ago called Magic. I didn't even know this existed. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that we actually we were actually the first people to do a tribute to Ronnie, and then everybody else, of course, followed. Ronnie, uh, I, know, I know we have a lot to talk about, of course, with your own band, but tell me a little bit about your remembrances of Ronnie and uh, maybe a, a special moment or impact he had on you. Well, you know, I grew up idolizing Ronnie Dio and, of course, the elves, and I used to watch him play at my high school dances, and, uh, you know, I just couldn't believe it years later on when uh, I started playing local places, and, you know, we became friends, and we met, and naturally, Doc, who worked and built all their equipment, became, you know, my one of my dearest friends, if my, not my dearest friend in the world, and... You know, ultimately, the day came when, uh, you know, Ronnie called Doc up and said, I just joined Black Sabbath, and their gear is junk, and uh, we're going to make a record. And it was the record at that time hadn't been titled, but it ended up being Heaven and Hell. And Doc flew down to Florida and uh, hooked him up with their gear, and then Ronnie called and said, you know, I need you to come over to England. And Doc said, well, I'm, I want to bring Joey DeMaio with me. And he said, yeah, bring them. And uh, he said, what about Geezer's bass gear? And he said, well, I built a preamp for Joey DeMaio. And uh, Ronnie called me and said, well, uh, can Geezer, you know, try this thing out? I said, yeah, because there was only one in the world. And I brought it over, and, and I wasn't in a band at the time. And we, uh, we built their back line and did their first tour. I was there for the first first ever show with Ronnie Dio and Black Sabbath, and I Ended up spending a year and a half on the road with them and, you know, formed Man of War as a result of, of being on the road with Sabbath. So, you know, Ronnie really, in a way, kind of got the ball rolling. He, uh, you know, he let Ross and myself into the dressing room when we were jamming to, uh, you know, first get to know each other. We met on that tour. So there's a lot of history, you know, between Man of War and, and Ronnie personally. And, you know, we were, we were dear friends. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's hard to believe. I still can't believe he's gone as he was a dear friend of mine as well. And I just want to remind everybody that in the L L.A. area, if you're listening, I'll be hosting the second annual charity dinner for Ronnie's Cancer Fund. That will be happening Halloween night at the Avalon in L.A. So if you can come out that way for a great cause, come and, uh, and hang out and get involved and help raise some money for this uh, great cause. Uh, Joey, new album coming out, October 19th, The Lord of Steel. I have an edition of this record, I guess uh, what's known as the Hammer Edition, and I know there's a different version coming on the 19th. Fill us in a little bit on what's going on with Man of War and the new album. Yeah, this was, this was something different that we've never done before. While we were in the studio working on the record, uh, Metal Hammer approached us and said we'd like to do a special version, kind of a preview of what's to come, and we would like you to consider doing that. And... We like to do things that are different. We like to do things that give the fans a little bit of a look inside what's happening during the, the process. And in this case, this was our first chance to really let people see what's going on as the record's being made. So this was kind of a preview of what's to come. And we're really, really happy that we can now deliver the record with you know a different mix, different mastering, of course, Ken Kelly's amazing artwork, and yet, fans didn't have to wait as long as they normally would have to actually get the music. So this is a, a rare limited edition piece that you have in your hands. Of course, it won't be manufactured again. And there was a magazine that went along with it. So it was a, a very, very fun thing to do. And it, it's given people who have purchased it a collector's item uh, for years to come that's limited. So it's great. So the version that comes out on the 19th, of October of the Lord of Steel, how different will that be to this one? Well, day and day and night in the sense that it's a completely different mix, completely different mastering, you know, different artwork, different booklet. 
if, if you look at what's coming out now, this is really the director's cut. This is the definitive version of the record. And the other one is a different version, absolutely a finished record and a finished, you know, a finished piece of music and another finished piece of Man War history. But it was a limited edition. It was kind of, okay, before the record's out in the stores, what would it be like if I was sitting in the recording studio as they were finishing up? Yeah, that's really cool. I don't think I've ever heard of a band doing that before to to release. I mean, everybody is so concerned about uh, their music and it getting out there too soon and when it hits and piracy and all that. I've never really heard, and they're also so concerned about, you know, is it, is it exactly 100% right before the public hears it? So I think it's really interesting that you guys let the fans in on the evolution of, of making a new Man of War record uh, it's really kind of cool. I, I, I mean, it's, it's somewhat of a risky thing, I guess, but I think it's really cool to uh, let fans see how this all works and how it builds. Well, you know, sonically, it's always it's a journey. The songs themselves wouldn't be presented unless the songs were something that we were pleased with. So letting the fans hear the actual raw tracks is, is fun for us because we want the record to be as raw as possible. And the uh, the album, when it comes out, I know versus this version, will have one extra track on it. Is that right? Because I see it says 11 tracks. Yeah. And the version I'm looking at here has 10, so there's an extra song on there too, right? Oh, yeah. It's 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 a devastating track called The Kingdom of Steel. Awesome. Now, you also, uh, fill me in a little bit about the movie tie-in, because did you do something with the Stallone movie? We wrote a song called Expendables, and at the time... Uh, the, the movie was being filmed. We actually were in Bulgaria uh, doing a presentation with a company that has a new multi-channel system uh, for movie theaters, and I've recorded in the format. It uses 13 speakers, but while we were there, Stallone was filming, and I had actually already written the song and, and played it for him and his entourage, and it was funny. They were all sitting there, and then when the song came on, he started headbanging, and then the whole room started headbanging. <laughs> So it was great, and the guy was just so nice and so professional and, and so pleasant that, it, you know, it's a shock. Sometimes you meet people that you admire, and they turn out to be complete jerks, uh, right. but he was just really, really cool, and uh, who knows? Maybe you'll uh, you'll hear this song in Expendables 3. You never know. Is he a metal fan, or was he aware of Man of War before meeting you and you playing him this song? Yeah, you know, he was kind of aware, or he never would have taken the meeting, you know? Right. So that was that in itself was an honor. Yeah, that's really wild. That's great. And I know there's. Uh, I just read recently, uh, just in the last day or two, uh, a video game component to all this too, right? You're working on one, or yeah, we just we part just of one? yeah we just um, put a, a cooperation together with this company called High Res, and they have a very successful game out there called Tribes, and now they have a new game called Smite, and it revolves around different gods, and you can take the part of whatever god you want from different countries, different mythologies, and you're that character. And they approached us about the song Sons of Odin, and I'll also be doing original compositions for the game. So that's that's a lot of fun. That sounds really cool. It sounds like Man of War would really lend itself to that in between the music and the message and everything. It sounds like it would be really great fit to, to do something like that. Yeah, it's it's starting out to be a, a really nice end to the year 2012. It's been a great year, and we're looking forward to 2013. I don't know if you you knew we did a song for a movie called El Gringo featuring Scott Atkins and, and Christian Slater, and that's available right now. And uh, we're also doing the soundtrack for the new Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Wow. Yeah, and it, this is an ass-kicking movie. It's called Soldiers. It's coming out next year, and uh, he's another really nice, nice person. Ass-kicking in the literal sense. <laughs> oh, for, oh, for sure. I mean, the guy the guy really, he, he really goes for it in this movie. But, you know, the thing that people probably don't realize is over the years, this guy has, has matured into a really, really great dramatic actor. You know, and I, th I don't know how many people would have expect that from him, but I can tell you that, you know, I've seen the whole movie, and this guy really has a depth uh, of yeah. performance that a lot of people are going to be very, very impressed by. If you've seen him in Expendables too, just the scene he did with Stallone, I mean, 
this guy's a powerful actor. Joe, do you like doing stuff like that? I mean, do you like taking Man of War's music and either writing and working on stuff or adapting it to movies and, and video games and stuff like that? Do you like that process? Yeah, you know, the, the beauty of it is we don't have to change our music to suit the format, and that's, that's the most important thing. If, if we had to change a thing about what we do, I would never do it. But fortunately, these people are hiring us to do what we do best, which is totally kill and devastate and melt people's faces. And I imagine, though, you have to be, because I know how much you personally put into Man of War. These are your babies. You write these songs. You craft them. You're meticulous about how they're recorded, the, the way they're played, the instruments, from the studio right to the live stage. Anybody that's seen Man of War knows that. So this is not a case where you're going to plug this stuff into anything that comes down the pike. I imagine you have to really feel a great sense of connection and that this works and will be respectful of what's happening with your music, right? You know, we have, we have the fans that we have because of the fact that it's more than a band, it's more than music. It, it's a brotherhood of people that believe in what we're doing. And we're not the biggest band in the world. We're just the strongest because we have the strongest fans. It's, it's very little to do with the band. It's a combination of the band and the fans. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to see you at these shows on Long Island in November, and we're going to take the roof off that shack. I mean, that, that is the reality. I don't care who's played there. I don't care what they've done. We'll be bringing our sound system in. You know, we're going to be changing the acoustics of the room, closing the balcony, hanging acoustic curtain in there. It's going to sound like a record in there, yeah, only it, loud, and the ground will shake. It's amazing, and I can tell you that this is not hype from Joey. If you have seen Man of War, you know what he's talking about. I saw you last when you played in New Jersey not too long ago, and I've never quite heard that room sound that way. And as Joey mentioned, there are some rare American shows uh, and on the East Coast. I mean, shows here in the U.S. for Man of War are somewhat rare, so get there wherever you're listening uh, and those shows are in Worcester at the Palladium on November 23rd, two on Long Island, the Paramount, November 24th and 25th, which I hear is a beautiful venue if it's still standing when Man of War is done. So make sure you get your tickets and get out to any of those shows. What's the future plan as far as live dates, Joey? I know that we've talked about this many times in the past. The, the, uh, the size of Man of War's fan base is truly global. I know you are literally all over the world on any given day, uh, but with the release of the new album on October 19th, as we get closer to the new year, do you want to, do you see opportunities that make sense for Man of War to play more in America? Because that's a question that I always get from fans. Well, yeah, and you know what's really, really interesting about it is we start in Spain on the 7th of October. So we'll be doing four shows in Spain, one in France and Paris, one in Holland, and one in Germany, four in the Czech Republic, one in Moscow, and then we come back to the States. We'll be doing two in, two here in Long Island. We'll be doing one in Worcester. And that will complete leg one uh, until after the first of the year. And then we start again in March, and we're going to be going a, in Eastern Europe and Scandinavia and so forth. And then we'll be doing summer festivals. But the interesting thing, and to answer your question, is, you know, for the first for the first time, we got a phone call from you know the two big powers. And anybody who's in the music business knows that there's two big powers. Uh, and we got a call from both of them. One was offering 11 shows, and the other was offering 13 shows in the states. And that was a that was the first. So I guess you know something's happening. The pot's boiling on the stove, as they say. Well, you've said that many times in the past that in order for Man of War to do shows, they have to be done on your terms. It has to make sense. It has to be the right venue. It has to be in a way that you can present the same power, the same sort of show that the band has always been known for. So it's nice to hear maybe some of those opportunities are coming your way again uh, in the new year because obviously people will travel, as we know Man of War fans will, to the shows that have been announced so far. But it's a big country, and people would love to see, uh, I think, the band out there a little bit more if the opportunities are out there. Well, you know, Eddie, we, we're not going to go and play these clubs and use their, their horrible PA systems. You know, we have to bring our own. We're not going to go there and not give 
you know, our fans and our people 100%. We're just not going to allow somebody else to tell us how to play our music and to who we're going to play our music for. It, it shouldn't be that way, and it can't be that way. You know, I'm not interested in what other bands do. When Man of War play, our fans will get 100% what they came for. And if there's any problems, we just leave and we'll go play someplace else and our fans will go where we go. And that's what it's all about. And finally, it seems like there's uh, an understanding now that we don't take any bull from anybody else and we're going to give our fans what they deserve, which is the best. Because let's face it, the best fans deserve the best. A few more minutes here with Joey DeMaio of Man of War. Again, the new album is out on October 19th. It is called The Lord of Steel. We'll play something from the Hammer Edition before we wrap up with Joey. And uh, three shows now announced in America, November 23rd, Worcester at the Palladium, 24th, 25th on Long Island at the Paramount. Joey, I was thinking about this when I knew I was going to speak to you again. You are a guy, and Man of War is a band that has truly been through a lot as far as the music business is concerned, from the earliest days, the, the very first album, which you recently re-recorded, uh, from independent labels to big record deals with Atlantic and major label stuff along the trail, and now to where you're at, where this truly is uh, a, a complete operation that you've built around you, from producing the records to putting them out, Magic Circle, the whole system you've built, the, the allies you have, the team you've set up, it's a very different world, the music business in 2012, than it was when you guys first started out. How did you, did you always see yourself headed to this point where you really just, everything came under the Man of War umbrella, or is this more a byproduct of what's happen, happening with the industry? Was this always the, the goal to get to this point? No, I was I was stupid enough to think when I first started out that all I had to do was just play guitar and party with girls and fly around on jets and wear leather clothes and drink champagne. And managers and people would take care of me. Um, but that's not the reality because the only person that's going to care about the music is the person who creates it. The only person that's going to care about the fans is the person that will meet them in person and listen to them and you know, associate and hang out with the fans. And I can tell you it certainly isn't those type of people. So I came to the realization very quickly that without those people, none of us, including yourself, are worth anything. We have nothing. You know, yeah, I could play my guitar in my bedroom, but if I wanted to do that, you know, then I would play a different kind of music if that was the case. I play metal because I love it and I live it and I, I couldn't live without it. And the people that I connect with feel the same. They can't live without it. They don't want to live without it. And so the only way that I can make the music I want to make is to make it for the people that want it. And if I don't look after them, who's going to? Yeah, and all you got to do is go to see Man of War live to know what Joey's talking about because, the, the, I mean, it's so it's so real. It's so in your face. It's so raw. It, 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 there's so much energy. There's just... There's an incredible vibe, not only with what's coming off the stage, but as you mentioned, the connection with every single person in that room. It's a very, it's a very unique bond, as I'm sure you know, Joey, that, that bond between when it's so intense between the fans and the band, and it doesn't rely on what the latest record sounded like or the latest single, or it, it, it's just... It, 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 transcends all that and it really is very special very few bands have it as i'm sure you know and i'm sure it's something you worked very hard to build over the decades well you know eddie you really can't build the kind of people that come to see man war it's just something that's in their heart and their blood and maybe you can play the song man of warriors after this and it'll explain it because i'm i'm very happy and very proud about what we do and i'm not interested in other bands and other fans but i can tell you and this is not to be insulting, it takes a thousand fans of any other band to make one man a warrior. And that's just the reality. And if people doubt what I'm saying, just come and see us once. And if you don't like it, you don't have to come back. But you won't deny that the place is packed with righteous people who are ready to live and die for metal.
and you can get a sense of what that is like around the globe as well when you, uh, if you pick up any of the Hell on Earth DVDs because those are amazing to see on a global level what goes on with Man of War after all these years. Joey, one other thing I wanted to ask you before we play a song and I let you run. Um, you know, you've been doing this now for a long time. The band has been making albums and music and you've been steering this Man of War ship for better than 30 years. And it's having just seen the band recently live, it's, it's still devastatingly powerful. But as you know, time stops for no one, and I'm wondering what you see down the line for Man of War. How much longer do you envision being able to do this and bring this level of energy? I mean, even Eric as a singer, it's remarkable. I see so many singers that have lost something off their voice as they've gotten older. It's remarkable what he's still capable of doing as a band, what you're still capable of doing after all these decades. But do you see a way you'd like it to end or how you would, how this would eventually, you know, for lack of a better term, retire from Man of War? Or do you just see doing this until you drop? Well, you know, the way I think of it is if I look at the Rolling Stones, they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, and there's an audience for them, and the audience is happy. And it's the same with ACDC. And I admire both of those bands because if you see ACDC on stage, there's 60,000 people a night. They're bigger now than they ever have been. And they are rocking. And their quality of what they do has not diminished 1%. So like Ronnie Dio said to me, I'm going to keep on touring and keep on playing until there's one person left in the audience. And if that person stays for the whole tour, that's great. Once they leave, <laughs> then I'm done. Uh, that's, that's a good point. Where did you learn? Did you learn all your acumen in the world of the music business through just being around it your whole life? Was there anybody that was influential? Because where I'm going is people that may not know this. I mean, I've really... I've talked to a lot of people in my nearly 30 years doing this radio show, and when I bring up your name, there's nothing but respect from, I'm talking... You're I'm talking, talking to the man. wrong people. <laughs> but no, Joey, I mean, I'm talking... You must from, be talking to my family. No, no, I'm talking from like a guy like last week, Brian Slagle from Metal Blade was here. Um, I talked to some of the promoters uh, at the venues when you just played most recently. They all talk about how you do things and how you do it so well. Me personally, you know, I'm grateful because you've reached out to me over the past uh, years and said, hey, you know, we've got this opportunity. Come over. We want to send you over to this place or that place. Unfortunately, my schedule didn't permit it, but there's very few people that, you know, do those things like that. Was that something that was instilled in you early on? Did you pick that up from someone, or is that just hand-in-hand -hand with the man of war mandate of how things are done? Well, you know, I was raised by a very respectful family, and I was taught to respect, you know, just to respect everybody and to offer respect. And, you know, I, I kind of live by the golden rule. You treat others the way they treat you. You know, and my education in this business has, you know, is thanks to all the people that screwed me over the years, and they, they gave me a wonderful <laughs> education. It, it's one that you just can't get in, you know, music school or any college. You know, I used, right. to, have, I used to have a martial arts teacher, that would go into every school that we traveled to in every city, and he would go in and he'd want to he'd want to fight the instructor, and you know he would say, you know, I hope the guy's going to kick my ass so I can shake his hand and say thank you, and would you now please explain what I did wrong? And he was he was sincere about that, and I kind of I kind of feel the same way. I tried to learn as much as I can, and sometimes we have to learn what to do by learning what not to do and there's there's no shame in that and you you can't be afraid to make mistakes or you're just never going to do anything in life so you know my education has been one of trying to make the best music i can and never let the fans down even if i have to lose in the end for it, it it's an investment you know it's not all about money well, listen, man, I appreciate the time. It's always great to talk to you. And one of these days when our schedule is aligned, it would be great to have you in here and sitting in with the whole show, for the whole show and telling some stories and playing some songs. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to have you, Joey, and I wish you luck with the new album. Again, October 19th is the date you can get the Lord of Steel. Manowar.com is the online destination to find out about everything going on with the band. And once again, uh, so far, the only American shows announced. November 23rd, Worcester. Mass at the Palladium, 
24th, 25th, Long Island at the Paramount. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster or PurchaseTickets.com. And, Joey, we will end if that's the track you want to play with Man of yeah, Warrior. Yeah, and also, for, for, the, for, those, for those who are listening who are like me and you don't want to wait for anything and you're very impatient, we're going to be releasing the record on iTunes on October 9th and, of course, at the Kingdom of Steel. So uh, for those that don't want to wait for the CD, you can get that immediately and get your head totally blown off. There you go. Let's do Man of Warriors to let you go. This really uh, Tell us about writing this song. This is really a tribute to your fans. It's absolutely all about the fans from all over the world and the way we feel about the fans and uh, the way the fans feel about us. And when you put it together, it's an explosion of face-melting, earth-cracking metal. Joey, safe travels out there. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Eddie. And thanks to all the fans out there that are Man of Warriors. You're the best.